Hey guys, and I'm here for you today with, with the fifth instalment in the WordPress design series. This this is a series where you can watch me build an entire WordPress theme for use on my personal website. Now, l l lots lots of people ask for this, and it's a really a really detailed series. I say this at the start of every video, but a lot of the videos have been over an hour, so. I'm not going to rehash anything uh, I've, I've previously said in each video, so if you haven't seen the previous videos, please go ahead and watch them so you can get an idea of, of where we're up to. And then once when you, when you come back, you can watch this one. Um, but let's just dive in and not waste any more time. Um, so th th this is where we're up to with the with the design and the development. The nice looking article pa article page, but there's still there's still there's still work to be done. For one thing, this navigation um is kind of not <coughs> di distinct distinct enough. So let so let's use some CSS. To style it and make it look a little bit more dis distinct. We only want to, we only want to target the nav in the header and to start off with. We're, we're just going to ch change the font size. To twenty pixels. See if that helps any. Uh, on e each link, we're gonna add um, some padding on the right to um, to separate the links out a bit. So zero on the top, zero on the left, zero on the bottom, and on the right we'll have five pixels of padding. So. There should be a space five pixels big after each link. And it hasn't targeted it up. As in the pre as as in the previous videos, we're gonna use fire both. To figure out why that hasn't targeted correctly. So what 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 we should what we should do really is make 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 her select a little more specific. We'll uh, we'll apply it to the list items instead of the links because links links can't have padding at least not by default because they're inline level elements not not block le block level wait we're gonna save that And, and still no look. So we've got a different class of menu on the unhundred list. So uh, I'm a little puz puzzled as to why we're not targeting correctly. Um, because we've we, we've got our selector properly organized. Oh, it's where the menu is outside of the he header div, so we need to target it distinctly from the bottom because we want we want the links to be different sizes. On the bottom, we want the links to be smaller. So um, to do to do that, I'm just going to be a bit more specific. 
and go into a header not PHP file, the file that is included on every page, and just uh, and we're going to we're going to go to the WordPress documentation and, tr and try and find something you can pass in to that that function to give you some way to target it uniquely. It's nineteen hours. So the function we used was WP page menu. Um, and let's see what we can menu class. That's a good one. So we can uh, we can add a specific class to our um, and to our links. So we've got something to target them uniquely by. So inside our brackets, we can pass in menu class, and we're not we're not going to call it top menu because that's not very semantic. We'll call we'll call it. Primary nav and well, it's important that you have to use the opposite quotes and um, to what you've been using. So hopefully, if we if we refresh. That's good. So now, if we if we look um, at what we've got inside that the the class name of that div is now um, primary nav. But we also need need to add the class of menu because we see it's gone all all odd um, because we target the class of menus. So we need to make sure that's there as well because that's a, that's the default class and we need we need to make sure that stays but fortunately you can you can um, apply the same class names to um, multiple class names to each element so it should work if we just say menu as long as you just put a space in there, you can define multiple classes. So, so we've now we've now got a way to ta target each of them. The, the the thing is, we've now we've now got a weird qu quote situation. We've got extra co extra quotes that we don't need. It's because I added them, but the the, the function adds them for you.
So we've got two separate classes. One that we can use to set general nav styles. That, that's that's the menu class that we used to um, target it before, but we can also target the top one now. So um, we're just going to change that a, a little bit to say to reflect that and get some changes cooking so we instead of putting head header there we we're just gonna say anything with a class of primary enough. Make sure you apply the, you apply those styles that we previously set. So with that with that done, if we can if we go over and refresh, the they they are a little bigger. It still looks a little chunked up there. I think I'm gonna um add some padding. To the actual um, menu itself, so we put. It, I normally do it in order of how specific the selector is. So if we put it before We define class of primary nav. This is just going to target the actual container itself, and we're going to add padding of ten pixels. There we go. That, that looks a, little, a lot better. Now we just need to work on separate separating these links. We're gonna apply it to the actual anchor element itself, not not just a list item. Yeah, so that looks that looks a little more separate. Maybe I could just um. Decrease the font size a little bit. And add a little more padding to the right of each. We'll, we'll say 8 pixels. That looks good, at least for for a star, a star anyway. Um, we can always customize it later. The next thing we're going to look at is 
uh, uh, put shown to these comment um, comment sections, and we're going to figure out um, how how to do comment striping. Now, if you don't know what comment striping is, it's basically um, having one one comment in one colour and one comment. And the next comment in other colour, it, it, it looks good on most websites, and I think it would look good in our situations. So, so we're going to figure out how to do it on WordPress. Um, I'm actually going to, going to go into the blank theme which we referenced several videos back. It's a great tool of reference into the comments. Um, area. So hey guys, sorry for that awkward cut there. For me shooting this, it's actually the, the the day after, and I'm gonna shoot these two clips together. This this is just a little conclusion to this particular video because I couldn't figure out how to do the comment striping. We're gonna tackle, tackle that in in the next episode coming out next week, which I'm just gonna shoot as soon as. Finish shooting this. Um, well, e even still, we've come a massive long way in the video. We've created, we've created a comment stop history file. We've, we've, um, uh, we've created a c custom loop to output, output our content, and we've altered, altered the dates with, with some of the stuff in, in there as well. So we've, we've, we've written our very own for each loop. So. Thanks for watching this video guys, I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, you can check out my website which is down below, tom com, for more tech content, and be sure to, be sure to tune in for the next in the WordPress series if you've enjoyed this video. I've also got a whole bunch of other general, general tech content on my channel if you're interested. So, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.